My name is Lucy Parker, and I'm chair of the Talent and Enterprise Task Force. Great. So your view about talent is that it's very important for the future of global companies. It certainly is, and I think that the tomorrow's company report demonstrates why. It's very clear that talent, skill, and creativity is going to be what global companies have to focus on uh, in the years ahead. That's true whether you're a global company employing in the developed world or in the developing world, whether you're in a new industry or an old industry. Um, talent is pretty much all we've got. And I think that's very important for Britain too. If we know that the context is that global companies have to worry about this, I think we do need in this country to bring it home to ourselves. Why should Britain worry about this? And there's a very clear answer for that. There is only one natural resource in this country anymore, and it's our people. So we have to ask ourselves, what are we going to do? What are our children going to grow up doing? What are we going to sell? And the answer is, it's got to be drawn out of our talent, our skill, and our creativity which all adds up really to our ability to innovate, our ability to dream up the new. And if you are running a company today, you may often find that even the most sophisticated companies, if you talk to them about talent management, will say, oh yes, we have that. Um, we have a very good program for our top leadership. In which case I would question back, that's terrific. Are you sure that it really passes muster as world class in the new global arena? Mm -hmm. Is it good enough? for you alone, or is it good enough for the new world arena? Secondly, then you ask yourself, so what actually is at the bottom end of your spectrum in terms of skills? There are too many companies in this country which still have a basic skills problem. People can't read and write, people don't have employability skills. We can't afford that as a, company, as a country, and companies can't afford that. And the individuals can't afford that, so we have to fix that. And then in the middle, perhaps, the big hidden area that people are really just only now beginning to talk about more and more is everybody in the workplace. It's fine to think about the people at the top, it's fine to think about the people who are making their way at the lower end of the organisation, but actually for true talent management now we have to consider how to be inclusive for everybody and to make the journey of their working lives progressive for themselves or you won't hold their loyalty and creative for you as a company or you won't be able to end now, do you feel that this is changing in lieu of the recent recession? I feel that it is true that some companies may step away from their commitment to it or narrow their commitment down, um, either in you know, training budgets or in the number of people they take through uh, training and upskilling courses, or simply in deferring it all. I don't think it changes the overall direction of where companies, countries and individuals have to go. There is no doubt that the only way out of recession now is to scale up and to uh, train up. And saying that, how do you think that talent management will change in the future? I think it'll get broader. I think that people have to look to tap into the talent of all of their workforce. People pay lip service to that a lot today but not a lot of companies actually do it. Um, if it's your only natural resource, and if it's our strongest asset, as I've heard many CEOs talk about, then you need to use it to its full. And there is a difference between the word talent and the word skill. Talent is innate, it's the spark in somebody, it's the potential of what they have to give. Skilling is acquiring something. You skill up, you're acquiring a skill. So the combination has to be the commitment to tap into what people can offer and to skill it up and to use it flexibly, creatively, freshly to find new solutions because the game is really going to be new rules. It's absolutely clear that one of the advantages that the developed uh, economies have to get a grip on is how to become developing again. There are many new companies in the developing world that are unencumbered by baggage historical baggage about how to create a company, uh, how to create product, how to serve customers. The developed world has to get very good at innovation and drive itself up the value chain and tap into the talent of all those people. It's the only way they'll earn a living for themselves and actually make a contribution 
across the whole globe and keep the loyalty of their people wherever they work in the world. That's great. Thank you very much.